of an aerial photographic collection in informing assessment of archaeology in endangered landscapes. So we've got endangered ar archives informing our um, knowledge of endangered archaeological material. And because this is only a 15 minute presentation, please excuse if something isn't explained fully, talk to me later. Also, um, if I miss say something out of turn, I apologize that I'm a bit frantic to get it all in in 15 minutes. So the Endangered Archaeology in the Middle East and North Africa Project, or UMINA, aims to locate, document, and monitor archaeological sites and any damage to those sites in an online platform for this Middle East and North Africa region. We are utilizing remote sensing as our primary initial assessment phase, but we also are building collaborations to work with people um, from the profession on the ground um, in the countries, but also networks of professionals in Europe, Australia, Canada, the US, etc. Historical aerial imagery collections from the first half of the 20th century are a fantastic resource, and it has captured landscapes before accelerated change in the latter half of the 20th century to today. Uh, just some examples. Uh, this is an isolated site in Jordan. Uh, this is the site we photographed it last year as part of the Aerial Archaeology in Jordan project. You have massive mining prospection across this landscape. Um, this is Azraq, and you have this massive uh, um, domestic building of houses in this area. So I hope to present to you today what Yamina is doing, how we are working with the Aerial Photographic Archive for Archaeology in the Middle East, to find and utilize these aerial photographic collections, and what the resulting data is, how we are potentially breathing new life and knowledge out of these archival collections. So endangered archaeology is not only about conflict. Conflict is a threat to our archaeology, yes, but it is not the only threat. While the period of time since the Arab Spring has seen horrible, significant disturbances to our collective, collective cultural heritage, an overemphasis on this period and of this single point in time is dangerous. It, it disguises the bigger problem. The Endangered Archaeology Project seeks to record all disturbances to sites, including archaeology itself. This aim was born from our team's collective experience in seeing the damage occurring from development, population growth, and agricultural expansion over the long term going unremarked and unnoticed, but most importantly, undocumented. And this includes archaeology, archaeology occurring, but the documentation of that archaeology not occurring. So this implies a level of acceptable destruction, which of course is not true. So part of the problem is knowledge where sites are and what comprises of them is not documented not documented in a way that can be consulted or consulted easily enough when local, national or international planning decisions are made, or the site is not understood, it's not comprehended by the people around it. Moreover, efforts to conserve heritage can be further exacerbated by a lack of communication, of education, of what cultural heritage is worth beyond an initial monetary gain. So for those of you that were at EA in Glasgow last year, I won't continue talking about our aims of Amina much longer because uh, our director Robert Bewley spoke of it then, and I shall move on to talk about historical imagery. It's an amazing tool that allows us to gather data to demonstrate and document what a site is or was, and also what disturbances have occurred across the region. And this is Kerbet S. Souk where it was once part of a very rural landscape and is now very much a part of an urban fabric. So we're tracking that change in the landscape as well as the change to the archaeological site itself. And we can use this knowledge to plan and communicate what mistakes have been made at a local level but also across this entire region. So what is the problem? Um, or I've skipped a slide, have I? 
that's like me. So the contribution of our database, we want to communicate information, we want to utilize that information, and we want to actively update this information. These are not going to be static records. When new information becomes available, when new archives are found, those records will actively be updated. It's not a static database. So the contribution of the archives. Archaeological surveys, excavations, travelers' reports, people moving through these landscapes at an earlier age, diaries, photo albums, aerial photography and maps. All are very important and give us an insight into a landscape that has changed. Objects that have been moved, so someone picks something up and it's now in a private collection. Archaeological mounds that are now excavated. What did the landscape look like before the archaeological mound was excavated? New meter is concerned primarily with con conducting an initial remote survey, so we are initially um, interested in this aerial photography, but we need the um, archives around the aerial photography to understand that aerial photography. So we're looking across all of these archive sources. But they're really, really hard to find for the MENA region. The Middle East and North Africa aerial photographic collections are in country, but they're scattered across Europe as well. Some of them are in Australia. So this is just a sample of some of the collections we're looking at. Um, of particular note is these aerial surveys that are done for mapping purposes, as um, the paper before me said. These frames overlap considerably, so you have a terrible large amount of photographs, but they overlap. So you can reconstruct the landscape in 3D, and you can do dig digital elevation models. So you, you're not just looking at a site, you are again looking at the entire landscape. So step one for you is <coughs> finding these collections and working out what archaeological relevant material they contain, and we're doing this with the Aerophotographic Archive for Archaeology in the Middle East. Apami actively runs an aerial reconnaissance program in Jordan and has been doing so for 20 years and is interested in expanding this into neighboring regions. Apami is also gathering information of these different aerial photographic collections that are around. We enter into agreements with those collections to organize and create a digital representation. Apami's role is to scan and display the material on their website but also to identify the site and communicate the geolocation of that photograph. They promote this information through their online interface, but where they have entered into the agreement, we do the research, but we send it back to the archival collection. We want them to have that information on record so they have that as uh, education tool, as a learning tool to point people to that collection as well. Sharing the data is really, really important. The result is a more searchable resource. Moreover, someone can preview the image before traveling. Really important if your collection is in Australia and your researcher is in the Middle East. Moreover, we are increasing collections exposure and benefiting the institutions that are housing and caring for these collections. I'm sure we all know that archives and collections are suffering huge budget cuts. They're constantly asked to demonstrate impact if they're getting more hits on their websites. If they're getting more inquiries, they can do that and the viability of the archive and collection is increased. So this is an example of a collection that we have geolocated. It's the Maxim Collection at the Library of Congress. It is already digitized. It's already in the public domain, which is fantastic, and I love the Library of Congress for that. But the information is purely what was written on the photograph. So we use our knowledge to geolocate these. And so as you can see, what you might not have realized, it's just an excellent record for the Jordan River and what that Jordan River landscape used to look like. And so now you can find that information and then you can go back to the Library of Congress and get those photographs. We are also linking data. So as you can see, a, a, a palmy comes up as a source and our photographs appear alongside an epigraphic database and the American Numismatic Society as a source of information for the site of Ezekiel, which is in the Jordan Desert. This is the Pleiades um, interface, which uses the Pleiades um, ancient world mapping tagging system to bring together different collections that are looking at ancient sites 
So you can find one collection when you're looking at another collection. So communicating, linking between data, um, between databases, between research, not just living in your own little bubble. So now the Amina database, where I currently work, is a heritage information resource for the entire region. Um, it's incorporating the aerial imagery record into the data one step further. And we are analyzing images for archaeological con content, but then creating site records for the sites depicted. So I'm drawing records from the British Academy Library and Archive, the Sir Rob Stein Archive. And we digitized this collection back in April 2015. This is the distribution of the collection that was done by the Apami stage of the research. So Yamina database has already 100,000 site locations, and we're constantly adding to that. And for a case study, I'll be looking at the site of Ballad Sindar, which is just in northern Iraq there. This is an aerial mosaic from Stein's material. And then you can go to the archive and go to the literature and compare what they say about the site with what you can actually see in the sites. You can verify that information. We can then compare it to later information. This is the corona satellite imagery. And you can then go to now where you have modern satellite imagery and compare all of that information. And we create a site record. So you have the extent of the site, you have the certainty that you actually think it's an archaeological site, what we think the site is, its form, whether there are walls, rubble, buildings, our interpretation, it's a circumvallation, it's a fortified structure, the disturbances, what has occurred there, and the threats, what may occur there. But what we're interested in is this related resources. This is all of the information first consulted by us in the creation of this record. So we have shared data, so original data sets that people have given us, bibliography, published material we've consulted, maps we've consulted, and then as you can see, this imagery record, which is quite expens expensive because of this in, uh, archival material. And you can search for this archival material. We're not just searching by site, we can search by these site records. So you can search for aerial photographs. You can search for published items. You can search for aerial photographs from a particular collection. And you get an individual source record in our database. So what is the source? It's an aerial photograph. Where is the source of this source from? It's from the British Academy Library and Archive. Who created it? The Royal Air Force. What's the copyright? Is there an online link to this resource? But interestingly, what are the archaeological sites in this record? And it's not just Ballard Sinjar. So from these photographs, we found other sites that need to be recorded. There is the main uh, Yazidi shrine in the area, but there are also three mausoleums around it or other shrines that don't get as much attention. So we created site records for those. There are two minor shrines. We created records for those. And there's this area of rubble spread to the southwest of the site. We created a record that, for that. So now they also got assessed for the damage to those sites. So we've become a record not only of the sites, the heritage and the landscape, but also all of the material that can give you information about that site, about that heritage landscape. And why is this important? Because we don't want a database to purely give you our interpretation. Our interpretation is our interpretation. You need to be able to go back to that original source material and you need to be able to find that, assess it for yourself, because your interpretation of a site or the reason why you're investigating a site might be slightly different to ours. So we need to constantly build that link between those two sites. And as I'm running quick on time, I'm unfortunately going to skip ahead. Um, this is our actor resource, but I can't go into that right now. But just to say that we're not only recording sites, not only recording the sources for those sites, but you've got historical events that occur that 
um, activities that occur and persons and organizations that occur in this landscape that impact on those sites. And so we're recording those as well. So when an earthquake happens like what happened in Italy, we can, 200 years from now, someone wants to be able to look at that event and go, what are the sites that were impacted by that specific event? And so these kind of tools in our database will allow you to answer those research questions. So to conclude, we've got a really big job ahead of us. It's massive. Um, but we are no by, we're not reinventing the wheel. We're not saying these are all new discoveries. We're creating a database to link all these things together. New sites can be discovered, but there are countless sites which once discovered or captured are now hiding in the archives, in photographs, and in satellite imagery. Investigating these resources and communicating them is important if we are going to preserve the collective knowledge of our heritage. The development of our online resource elucidates not just the location and changes occurring at sites, which can inform our decisions in relation to the landscape and heritage, how to preserve it, what things perhaps might can't be preserved in situ, but we're creating a record for them. But also we can and we are crediting where that information is coming from and creating a record of where that information is. We're very pleased at APAMI that doing this digitization increases the exposure of these archival collections. Uh, we hope the connection of the resource with the sites in the Amina database uh, further promotes the depths of these resources. Sites are endangered, but the knowledge of them will endure if we shine a light in the archives and we utilise what resources we already have at our disposal to locate and record them. And our archives and collections will endure if we share and work with them. Thank you. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah.